Well, collectors, here we are again. Uh, another unboxing. Uh, I think we're on number 73. Is that right, Ob? That's right, 73. At 73, and uh, today is 3 May 2023. So we don't have a lot of stuff, um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see what it all is, and uh, uh, I'm glad to have you all watching. I hope it's something worthwhile. But I got to light a cigar here and get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. And here's to you all. Like I always say, it's too early, but uh, somebody's up. So, Prost. Mm, I made that one a little bit strong, but uh, that'll work. Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's start out with uh, maybe this box. You can see that the post office handled it very, very <laughs> carefully. Uh, I hope it's not a, a piece of china or something in there, but... Uh, I think the guy sat on it while he was driving his route. Yeah, that's what, that, what it looks <laughs> like, but... I don't know, what are you going to do, but... You know, when you see stuff like that, you want to take heed when you're shipping, because um, they, they don't treat... Uh, they don't treat stuff as though it's their own, let's put it that way. So let's see what we got here. First box of the opening, kind of squashed, but nevertheless, let's see what it is here. Maybe it'll slide out. Oh. Looks like a couple of things here. Yeah, that's it. I don't know why, why did he need this great big box for that. Oh well. I just had it laying around. I shouldn't be so critical of guys. Alright, let's see what we can do here with this stuff. Got my trusty Bob Burns cutter here. Yeah, it's a good one. It's working. Oh, we got some kind of a plaque here. Oh, there we go. Um, It's got a, uh, I guess it's a kind of a celebratory uh, plaque uh, for A.H. coming to office. Uh, you can see it's, uh, it's dated um, 30 January 1933, and that, of course, was the day that uh, uh, the Third Reich took over. Uh, and it looks like there's a little um, presentation disc here also. Uh, which I think is dated 33 also. Is it not, Ob? Can you see that? Um, looks like it is. I can't tell from here, but... Yeah. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it is. It. Yeah, that's Yeah, that's a nice, uh, a nice little plaque. And then, as I always like to tell you, when you see these little triangular hangers, I like to see them. They're on just about everything. Uh, it's a good sign that this stuff is real. Uh, so that's not too bad. I like that one. I like it too. I've never seen it before. Yeah, you think there'd be more of them. Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks like it definitely was something that was probably sold to, to celebrate the uh, the coronation. Oh, I shouldn't say that because we have one of them coming up this week. Uh, well, let's see what else uh, what else we got here. Incidentally, too, I... I've been told that I move too fast with the stuff and that I'm supposed to slow down a little bit. Uh, so I'll try to do that. Uh, some of these things I can't get through fast enough, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, well, well, we'll do the best we can. Oh, here we have another uh, another plaque. This one is an all, all metal job here. Let's see what the ah uh, it's something about the comrade of the infantry division, uh, General Field Marshal von Mackensen, uh, with his group, uh, and apparently it was some kind of an honor. Um, a Wander Poco is like a um, uh, a hunting related uh, hiking type thing in 1934 uh, and that's a pretty nice thing too it's all um, it's all bronze it's very heavy 
uh, kind of nice, and it has a uh, has a little stand. You didn't get that, Ob? No, I'm trying to. You're moving uh, too fast. Moving too fast. <laughs> See, that's what I do. You got to tell me. All right. And on the back, it has. Uh, well, it's got another one of those little hooks, and it's got a nice little um, a brass arm to stand it up too. It's that's very nice uh, piece. Uh, let's see what we got next. Yeah, these are kind of interesting stuff you don't see. Uh, I like plaques myself, and you can uh, put them around your collecting room, and they add add interest and. Uh, and some of them, a lot of times, are quite um, artistic, uh, or they refer to uh, famous times and things that happened. So what the heck, you know? And what's this? Wow! Oh boy, I love this. <laughs> wow! Isn't that a great-looking thing, collectors? <laughs> wow! This is the uh, the Kaiser on the top, all bronze, and uh, uh, the, this is uh, this is all uh, bronze oak leaves and all. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, that's a keeper. That's neat, isn't it? Yeah, you like it, Ob? Sure. Let me see if it stands up. Sure yeah. Wow, that is uh, the design is so capturing. You know, it just uh, it's really uh, really a wonderful wonderful piece. Yeah, it's been around a while, and but it's in great shape. There's no uh, no nicks on it, and uh, uh, the Kaiser looks good here. Yeah, I I really uh, I really like that thing, man. Well, those are uh, those are three uh, three really nice things. Uh, uh, I thank you, sir. The uh, uh, the check will be in the mail. Yes, sir. There's some great things. You like that, Ob? That, that's very, very clever. Very well done. Okay, we'll put these back. And well, that wasn't too bad of a start, guys. Stuff you don't see. Hmm. Ah, that's not a bad start either. Yes, sir. Well, let's see what else we got here. Oh, there's the phone again, another customer. Now, well, let's see what we got here. Nice little box. Nicely done. Mm-hmm. Let's see what this is up. Oh. <laughs> Looks like we got we got some tin foil here. Well, <laughs> in lieu of a scabbard. <laughs> scabbard. Uh, so there you go guys. There's a a very nice um uh, icorn plain bayonet. Uh, looks like the blades mint just needs to be cleaned off a little bit. Um, I remember now the man said he didn't have a scabbard. I said, okay, send it in. Maybe we'll find one. Very possible. So uh, that's not a bad little piece and uh, hmm. still, still got it? the felt in it. Icorn? Icorn, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. So we can use that. I think they switched scabbards though, I don't think that's the original scabbard. You don't think that's the original scabbard? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Uh, uh, we better check it out, Ob. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Okay, guys. Well, there you go. Nothing too thrilling there, but um, again, it's a good thing though. We'll find a scabbard for that piece and somebody will get a good bayonet out of it. Absolutely. Because that little bayonet looks like it's just about mint. Let's see what else we got here. Another small box. Oh, we're getting a lot of small boxes here, guys. Oh, this one opens right up here. Let's 
see what this could be. Oh, wow, this must be something from Alex of Russia. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. He makes, um, he takes photographs that he finds with um, uh, Russian soldiers wearing captured German uh, daggers, and then he makes a miniature out of them. And that's really great with that, uh, that chained SS. And this other thing must be some... Uh, is this microphones or something, Ob? Open it up. I think that's what it is. Yeah, he, he borrowed them off of... Yeah, he borrowed microphones. Yeah, he gave us microphones and borrowed them. There, so yeah, I think that, he's returning there, there. He's returning oh, the microphones. We don't use them, so... Oh, I think that's outstanding. Look at that. He's also wearing an SS sword with a knot. Oh, I didn't get that. Let me see. Yeah. Where's the other guy at? Uh, we have him around here somewhere. We're going to have to make a shelf for all these that keep coming. Yeah, yeah, I like that. You collectors like that? That's pretty cool. Think I'll stay there? No. No? Better put it here. Huh? You're right, Ob. And the microphones I'll put here, too. Oh, oh there he is, you. up there. Oh, yeah, there's the <laughs> other one up there, yeah. I knew it was here somewhere. Might as well just put the other guy up there with him. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. He's got a buddy now. Uh huh. There we go. Okay, well, there. A couple of boxes there, guys. Let's see what we got here. Some kind of envelope. Uh, it says popcorn free. <laughs> I guess I guess you guys are getting on to me complaining about the popcorn. Well, that's nice of you. No, no popcorn in this one. Let's see what we got here. Uh, I have to cut this a little bit more. Yeah. See what this could possibly be here. Uh, there's a little letter. Uh, okay, it encloses some tableware that I want to consign. So, all right, we'll look at that. Okay, here's a um, a Himmler um, a fork. Looks like a goodie. See what else is in here. Ah, I like the way he did this. <laughs> How's that for ingenuity, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we got a lot of uh, a lot of different things here. Um, there's an EB piece, uh, uh, one of these great um, Tourigan pieces. I like them with that with that neat eagle. Um, this looks like an Africa core piece. I've never seen that before. Some other things here. Uh, I'll have to look into what all these are, uh, but it looks like um, a group of um, interesting things here. A DAF. A DAF, uh, yeah, there's a DAF, um, a Luftwaffe. Uh, these I love. Uh, don't you like that Tourigan Eagle yeah, collectors? Yeah, sure. They're really, uh, they're really neat. And there was also a metal that was made like that that's pretty rare and hard to get. Um, well, here's something that's really rare. A, um, uh, the sender says it's a Graf Zeppelin lunch fork and pin. Um, that sounds, uh, carried only 24 passengers, so can't be very common. Yeah, if you think about it, how, how big would their table service be if they only had 24 passengers? Yeah, it looks like some interesting things here that uh, we definitely have to 
have to study and, uh, and see what it all is. Some of it I don't recognize immediately looking at it, but uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's going to be fun to look at all that. Uh, we, I find that um, uh, flatware collecting is, uh, is getting very popular these days. Uh, there's still a lot of work uh, to be done on uh, identifying uh, the different pieces, and uh, uh, but eventually we'll get there. Uh, sooner or later, it just takes some scientific guys out there that know how to do research and stuff like that, and, uh, and we'll get to the bottom of it all. Well, I'll put this, put this down. Uh, but that looks like a pretty interesting. Uh, group of stuff. What do you think, Ob? I like it. You like it? Yeah. They're all individual pieces, which yeah. is very odd. And I guess that was, I don't know if it was a collection or... I don't know, but uh, mm. this is good too. Mm. Well, let's see what else we got here. Oh, this is kind of kind of heavy here. Oh, this, uh, yeah, this is a group of stuff that uh, uh, we've sold a lot of things from this collection over the years, and it was a lot of uh, pennants and armbands and things like that, and they, the family said they still had some stuff left, and, uh, and could they send it, and I said, yeah, uh, that's fine, and... <laughs> As you, can, as you can see here, <laughs> there's, a, there's quite an assortment of, uh, of belt buckles. Boy, there's a lot of different ones there. Oh, there's an SS one, and, and I like that DJ one. Yeah, it'll be fun to go through all these. Uh, a lot of different types. I think I'll flip it over, too, and see what's on the other side. And, there we go. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a lot lots of different things here. Wow, there's a nice uh, Luftwaffe officer. Yeah, so we'll have another fun. SS. Yeah, another SS. We'll have fun going through all these. And uh, oh, here's a um, a tropical um, tab attached to the army uh, buckle. That's some some good stuff. Uh, uh, see what else is in here. Uh, this looks like some kind of a. Uh, I think that's uh, one of those DAF banners, or a podium banner, yeah. or something maybe. I'm gonna take a shot and say it's DAF. Uh, you're usually right, Ob, on this stuff. You're, oh, mm -hmm. There's a lot more than just that. Uh, wow, there's a lot of things here. Mm -hmm. Now it's, um, it's looking like a stand art. Uh, now. This is a um, a funeral sash. Um. Wow, I, look at this. I've never seen anything like that. Little tiny banner. Isn't that different? I don't know about that one. I'll have to look at that one. It's uh, made out of velvet and uh, it's certainly different. Let me see the hooks on it. Yeah, that looks very huh? Yeah, it, uh, it's got the uh, swaths is highlighted with gold thread. Uh, that's certainly a different thing. I've never seen that before. And a uh, uh, fire police sleeve insignia, DAF. Another fire police. Guys collect these, you know. They collect them by town sure. and so forth. And uh, they're pretty popular. A, um, a sports eagle, but it's a kind of a narrow winged one, isn't it? It's not yeah, as... Uh, it looks. It's not army. I think it's police, but it's in yeah, black, it's, it's a, odd. Yeah. Uh, here's a um, some kind of a Luftwaffe, a, a veterans, uh, an army helper, uh, a um, a nice uh, uh, SA Sports. Yeah, here's the standard size um, army eagle. Is there a so, tag inside that sports? Uh, no, there's no tag. No, no, no but, inside of here. Oh, inside of the sports. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There you go, Ob. You sensed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there are in a lot of these. You know what these are really for, guys? You know, when um, uh, the 
uh, SA Sports Award uh, was almost, um, well it wasn't almost, it was mandatory that, uh, uh, that SA people uh, compete uh, to win that award uh, and apparently they were given uh, this armband when they successfully completed it. Um, most of them you see aren't very worn so I suspect that it was more of a trophy rather than it was something to wear. Uh, but uh, back to this smaller eagle, uh, you can see how um, uh, that eagle is much different than the normal uh, army eagle. Uh, so that'll take some looking into to see what it is. Uh, uh, you might be right, Ob, but maybe it's a, well, I don't think it's a police or what have a, I don't know, but. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to check I, it out. I, it, I, it probably is not an army eagle. I have to look into the, the, the wonderful yeah, we should New brown see. Book. Uh, here's an armband that's uh, that's seen some visits by little creatures here, and they've eaten up the um, the field. Uh, which uh, it's a shame because it still has a tag on mm -hmm. it too. But uh, well, things happen. And then let's see what this is. This looks like quite something. Yeah, I, this is quite something. Yeah, this is with the uh, the party badge. Uh, this is an old guard flag. Uh, you don't see these very often. It's all printed. Um, all kinds of um, a fringe on it. Uh, yeah, and it's marked. Um, it's got an RZM tag on it there. It also uh, it's marked by the maker Philip Bueller Keel and uh, Alton Garda, hmm. Old Guard. Yeah, right. Yep. That's a pretty rare banner. I'm glad to have that. I don't think we've had one of those to sell off, so that uh, uh, I've I've seen that before, but not in a long time. We'll have to check it out, but it looks it looks good to me. We'll see. Hey, Dad, can you show the viewers the uh, New Brow Sports book that we that will research these things in? It's right behind you, the two volume set. Yeah, uh, I mean it's the best. Yeah, it's um, uh, Robbie's right about this. Um, uh, a lot of um, a lot of authors uh, just do not get enough credit. Uh, this man, um, uh, he's a doctor. Um, his name is Rob Newbrow, N-E-W-B-R-O-U-G-H. And uh, this two-volume set of uh, books is absolutely fantastic. Uh, they cover uh, all of the different sports awards that were held during the Third Reich. Uh, and the books are just uh, absolutely wonderful. We use them all the time for for reference, and uh, I mean they just uh, they, they're just fantastic. Uh, a, a lot of period photographs showing all these things in wear, and uh, I mean it's just it's just great. It just has uh, it has everything in it. See there, you want to see Hitler Youth things. I mean it just uh, the research that was done here. Is um, is phenomenal, and uh, Dr. Newbrow certainly deserves a, a lot of credit. Um, I don't know how he was able to uh, discover all this information, but uh, he at one time uh, also had done a uh, display at the Mac Show of uh, sports shirts, and uh, I think it took up about uh, 100 feet yeah. of space. Uh, that was one of the better exhibits we had. Yeah. But you can see the, the amount of information in, in these books is, um, is phenomenal. And they're available through um, Schiffer, I believe, who published them. But just look at this. Here's all those SA awards, you know. Nobody knows what they are. This gives all the gals they come from and everything. And uh, uh, just, um, just phenomenal. Uh, just a great, great books. 
I know Ob uses them all the time. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that um, uh, is a worthwhile investment. Uh, and it would also uh, put some credit where it's due uh, to Rob Newbrow. Just a great, great, great job, Rob. Okay, we got uh, we got some more that's still in this box here, and let's see what else we got here. Oh, here's a oh god, a whole whole bag of uh, tinnies and stuff, and <laughs> uh, boy, they made so many millions of these things. But I know there are guys out there that uh, that do collect these things, and. Uh, when we get them, we try to sell them in groups of four or five and keep the price reasonable. Is that an oral B uh, grip insignia right, uh, right here? Or is that just a... Uh... Oh, you got a sharp eye, Ob. Yeah, it does look like a grip insignia, but let's just look at it. No, it is not. It's, it's a, a pin. pin. Yeah. It's a little bigger than yeah. it should be, yeah, too. Yeah, you look at it again, yeah. sure. Yeah. That's still cool. But there's, uh, yeah, it's cool. There's some uh, interesting things in here. Uh... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, my. I mean, boy, there's no end to it. Is there collectors? It just uh, keeps going on and on and on. <laughs> wow. See, these are the kind of things that were carried by street vendors, you know, and... Uh, Whenever they'd have some kind of rally or parade, these guys would be all set up and selling these uh, these kind of things. So uh, I find uh, a lot of them are pretty interesting. So that's an interesting bag of stuff there, and uh, I'm quite sure the uh, majority of the take was for the Reich too. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Okay, we got a set of um, of um, mother's crosses here, all three it looks like, and then there's a little miniature up here too of a silver one. Uh, so they're kind of nice. Um, uh, we used to we used to be mothers crossed to death in this business uh, years ago, uh, but today it's very hard to even hold on to a mother's cross. They're they're very very popular. So that's that's good, the whole set there, and and then it looks like we got a a Riker mount full of um, police badges and the like, uh, a couple of Olympic things. Uh, this is a um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, I can't think of the, can't think of the name of it. Uh, but um, I can't see the way you have it tilted. Yeah, that's better. We just saw that badge the other day, didn't we? It's this from, one we saw the yeah. other day on something, it's yeah. It's from a lanyard, isn't it? That's what I think. Yeah. Well, we'll look into it and see, but it's a good box of stuff. And uh, Is that a police insignia in there? Yeah. Gr these, insignia? these are... Uh, right these here. Are, right there. That? No, no. no, that's off of a, of an army camo or a uh, tropical. Yeah, it does look like a police grip insignia. Um, and there's some more uh, tinny type things. Interesting box of stuff. Oh, that's a Quidlin bird there. That's 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 a monster. If that's what... yeah, that is a Quinlan bird. Uh, that is a monster. If it's real, we'll have to check it because they did repro those things. Okay, and here's some uh, shields. Um, don't know about that Demjansk, but uh, uh, that looks like a good crim and a good Kuban. And uh, and then here's a combat clasp also. Uh, that's good. And uh, well, we got a speaking of lanyards. There you go. Well, here's a really good one you don't see. Look at that. I think they were for generals, were they not? I don't know them that much to know. A gold one like that. Really it's right. with the artillery shells. And here's a regular uh, regular army type. And anything else in here? Oh, well, <laughs> a little pennant. 
Gotta have one of them to wave during the parade. Uh, here's some kind of a, I don't know what that metal is, may not be German. And here's a 25-year uh, service metal in the box. So there's uh, there's quite a bit of uh, of odds and ends here. And what's this last item? Another weird-looking thing. Ooh, never seen that before, Bob. Yeah. Looks like a placemat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a placemat. Uh, I don't know. Never saw that, but but that uh, that looks like about it. Uh, some kind of kind of interesting things there. Well, I got my work cut out to to figure out all this stuff and easy to ship. You no, know, it's easy to ship, but uh, it takes hours to write up. You, you get done three days of work, and what do we got here? Oh, uh, eighty-eight dollars uh, and fifty cents. <laughs> Well, the buckles will make up for some. That's that's something. They're really some good buckles there. Uh, and then these things are quite interesting too. Some good armbands and uh, and that uh, old guard flag. So there you go. Yes, sir. A lot of a lot of stuff there. Let's see what we got here next. Next, it's time for a drink, guys. Mm. Well, we haven't seen any edge weapons yet, Ob. Not yet. It's young, the day is young. <laughs> well, we'll see. Let's see what we got here. I like the stuff so far, though. It's good. Yeah, it's different than we usually get. We did see an edge weapon, we saw that bayonet. What are you talking about? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we got one edge weapon without a scabbard. <laughs> Still a good bayonet, though. That was a nice uh, nice bayonet. Well, let's see what we got here. Up, oh, it's in one of those prohibited plastic bags. Yeah, guys. save that sucker. I'm running low on them. Yeah. I'm starting to get worried. Yeah, you're not allowed to not allowed to have these, and and then they make the knot so tight that Whitman can't get it open. Mm, just cut that one there, uh, then. Yeah, sacrifice that Bob one. Bob Burns, where are you? Here we go. Bob will take care of that in an instant. See, that's what doesn't make any sense. It says let's reuse and recycle, and but that's what they got rid of. Yep. <laughs> it just <laughs> makes a lot of sense, huh? Now everybody's got to walk out with a handful of yep. food or whatever. You can't get a bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now all these shoplifters have to hold it all <laughs> on because they can't get a bag for the stuff they shoplifted. <laughs> oh, what a shame. Well, let's see what we got here now. There you go, see? Yeah, it looks. This looks like something uh, to do with edge weaponry. Absolutely here. Oh, what a nice, uh, what a nice looking dagger. Wow, with the knot properly tied. Yeah, look at that. A nice uh, off-white grip. Uh, nice quality fittings. Want to uh, take a guess on the maker? Well, they're generic um, A fitting, so there is no way to tell who it is. And it's interesting too, it's got those brass um, carrying bands which contrast nicely with the, uh, with the scabbard. Uh, this is just patina here, this, there's nothing wrong on the back of the scabbard. And let's see what they are. Icorn. No, no, it won't be icorn. Oh, no. oh beautiful mint blade, perfect. Yeah, it could be anybody with generic fitting, so we'll see. Ah, oh, there we go. F Herder, the keys, oh, yeah. cross keys. Yeah, cool. See, they were a real small maker, so uh, they didn't produce any parts for Army Daggers, so that's why you see generic fittings on their product. Uh, but nevertheless, a, uh, a very nice, uh, very nice Army Dagger. 
Nothing wrong with that at all. Let's see what we got in the next bag. Oh, it looks like another army dagger. This one's got the straps on it. Whoa, yeah, beautiful grip. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a beauty. Beautiful hangers too. See those leather tops and uh, uh, generic uh, A fittings again on this dagger. Um, beautiful scabbard. Look at the silvering on the on the fittings. It's never been cleaned. Um, the top of it is probably nice too. Yeah. Yeah. This is a uh, a very very fine uh, fine dagger. I like this dagger a lot. Just looking at it, the grip is so dark. It's really attractive. The leather the leather tops on the hangers match the grip. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> you're right, Ob. Yeah. No, nah, that's a, well, let's see if there's a maker mark on this one. Well, here's a common thing you see, guys. Yep, you broke it. You bought it, buddy. Yeah. It's easy to fix, though. That's not a problem. All right. And, oh, wow. Look at that beautiful blade. The only reason that ring is probably still there is because of the hangers. Yeah. Well, I'll fix that ring. That's no problem. That's no problem at all. Ooh. Wow, it's made by coping. Oh, the beer mug, right? Yeah, that's a that's a maker you don't see very often. Uh, and this is really, really a nice uh, a nice dagger too. High quality all the way. And as we say, the grip couldn't be better. Just beautiful. Yeah, guys, look at that. That's uh, that's really, really nice. Yep, glad to have that. You like that one, Ob? Yeah, you gotta like that one. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, that's a that's a nice, nice, nice piece. And I like this one too. They're both nice. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, we always like it when we get uh, nice, clean pieces like that. All untouched and all. You can't ask for any more than that. Now let's see what else we got here. Got a little box. Let's see what this is. Uh, oh, this is from my old buddy Steve Diner in um, in Canada. Uh, he's a good man. He's started collecting a couple of years ago and uh, he's been really really building a, um, a fine fine collection uh, he was a uh, he was a gun collector and now has uh, switched to uh, uh, edge weapons uh, so I'm uh, glad to be around to help him let's see how this baby works here what could this be Oh boy, here we go. Uh, uh, this looks like another uh, <laughs> another gift, guys. Too many gifts around here. I'm getting embarrassed with this all the time. Um, but it's certainly very nice of you. And what do we got? Oh, some nice, uh, some very, very nice uh, cigars here. Yeah. Uh, they're um, Arturo Fuente, my my favorite. So isn't that nice? And oops! Oh boy, here we go, Debbie. It <laughs> looks like something here for you, girl. But you can't get to it because of that big box in the way. Isn't that nice? Uh, should, should walk a mile for a chocolate bar. That one. <laughs> yeah, these these look like really uh, really good. Uh, look at these babies, Deb. Oh, wow! They really look good, don't they? Oh yeah. Yeah. Who sent these? Uh, you'll never guess. Steve Diner. Oh man, Steve. Thank you, from, Steve. From Canada, and he sent me four nice uh, Fuentes. Oh, so, uh, nice, nice. 
very, Thank very, you very, very, much, very nice of you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure uh, uh, those candies will be enjoyed. Oh yeah, they'll be going by lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> it is lunchtime. Oh, that's really great, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, isn't it something how people are that thoughtful? You, uh, you try to help them a little bit with their collection and uh, and they pay you back a hundred times. It's really, really, really nice. Thank you, sir. All right, now we got uh, we got kind of a kind of a real big box of mm. and. Uh, We'll probably have to work from the floor on it. Let's see. At least I can try to get it open here first. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. It's very heavy, so that's always promising, right guys? See what we got. Hope it's something exciting. Don't you guys? I hope so. But you know what? I like this stuff we got so far. Rob's right. It's a nice uh, variety of things and you know stuff we don't have that often on the openings. Uh, so it's it's always good to get uh, other things. All right I got this open. I'm going to put it on the floor and see what I can do with it. Uh, Oh boy, there's a lot of a lot of paper in here. Yeah. A lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of bubble wrap. Actually, this is from the same person that sent me the big box last week. You remember that that one knob with all the daggers in it and yeah. all the paper? Yeah. So it looks like we got uh, a lot of the same treatment here. It's okay. But uh, you'll have to bear with me guys and we'll get through it. See what we got. And I'm, and I'm sure there's going to be some uh, some worthwhile things that you guys will like. I hope anyhow. If we ever get to it. Oh well, here we got a letter. A lot, of, a lot of paper and a lot of bubble wrap. I think we're getting down to the core of things here, guys. There we go. Well, let's see, we'll put this over here for the moment. We'll get these things out. Well, it looks like we got a few things, Ob. Wow. Oh yeah, the rubber band man. I remember yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Yeah. The rubber band man, exactly. Might need a new fresher drink for this one, then. Yeah. <laughs> ah, man. I better go get another battery. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Look at all this. Well, I don't know if that's everything, but. It's a start, anyhow. Uh, let's see what we see what we got here. You guys ready for this? I think I am, but I need another drink. <laughs> you were, yeah, you were saying something over. about edged weapons earlier. Yeah, I spoke too <laughs> soon. Mm. Ah, that helps a lot though, guys. 
Well, let's see what we got here. This looks like something you guys are going to like. Looks like one of those saw daggers. Yeah, it's a saw dagger. <laughs> uh, it's an SA with a really nice grip again. Uh, uh, the scabbard is actually painted, but it's original that way. Sometimes they're not anodized. Um, it's got nice nickel fittings, and it's got a, um, a B here. Uh, I wonder if this could be like a Hako, maybe, yeah. you know, with that kind of grip. Yeah. Look, and I'm, these fittings, I'll bet it's a Hako. That would be my guess, too. I'll bet. Let's see. I concur. <laughs> you concur, yeah. It's got a good blade on it. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm yep. telling you, uh, yep. we're good. That one was kind of easy, though. Yeah. The Hakos have these um, uh, special grips also, and the fittings are a little different. And uh, usually inside, they were personally numbered too. They'll have like ink numbers inside yeah, of the. I didn't know uh, that. I don't yeah, know. the Hakos Where's do. Where's the number? It's the on the inside of the cross guards. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe you can get that this bit. doesn't look like it's ever been apart, so yeah. I won't take it apart. But uh, I'll, I'll bet you you'll find written numbers. Well, everybody's going to be checking their cross guards. Yeah. So. Checking those hot mm -hmm. out. So that's certainly a nice... What uh, kind of number sequence? Like three, four, one, no, two? No, there'll be five, four or five uh, digits. and um, I, I don't know whether they were just assembly numbers, probably. Let's see what we got here. Well, it looks like another Super SA. Yep, a beautiful anodized scabbard with a short hanger, real nice grip. Look at that grain in there, and uh, quite a beautiful, um, nice. really quite nice. a beautiful dagger. Um, this one is marked uh, capital N O, and look at the fit and all in there. The grip, grip is, is uh, it's really cherry, fantastic. You know? Yeah, it looks like cherry wood. Yeah. It does. Yeah, the anodizing is really good. Let's see who made this one. Uh, oh, good blade. Got what a little oil on it, but uh, any guesses? No, I can't guess on this one. No. Well, we'll see here in a second. Well, that's why I can't guess. Um, Weltersbach with a um, water pitcher with a chain handle. Gotta be kidding me. <laughs> that's another rare one. Boy, that is. Isn't that nice? Wow, I've never seen that before. Mmm. I've seen it, but only once or twice. That's a rare maker. That's another nice, uh, very nice dagger. Wow. Well, you guys that are always looking for SAs, it looks like uh, we're going to have a couple here. Yes, sir. And here we go again. Mm-hmm. Yep, another beauty. Got good, good nickel cross guards, good anodizing, the original short hanger, uh, very nice grip. Let's see how it looks on the other side. Uh, yeah, this one's a, a B.O. So the anodizing shows just a little bit of wear, but not bad. Let's see who made this one. Oh, full mint blade. Beautiful. Look at all that grain and everything in it. Wow. Just got oil on it. Full mint. Oh, Gabruder Bell. Yeah, I haven't seen one of those in a while.
That's a nice dagger too, guys. The blade is just the best, like brand new. Well, there we go. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, I'm gonna break the break the chain a little bit here. This is a, looks like a bayonet uh, with an army officer knot on it. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, it's a good knot. Uh, it's got nice. Um, uh, almost mint scabbard paint, nice hilt. Still got the felt in it. A good, um, good frog. It's a short blade. Oh, I think we got a problem here. Yep. You see what I'm saying, guys? Uh, it's in a long scabbard and it's a short blade. Um, well, with the knot too, it's probably a vet put together. It could be uh, no maker on it. It's that stepped end type blade that's mint. Uh, so we have to do some work on finding a scabbard uh, for this piece. That's two scabbards. Now. That's two. two we're two down <laughs> now. Two scabbards down. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Maybe some. Army guy bought the short bayonet and had the uh, uh, the, sca the dagger put in the long scabbard so that it looks like he paid the more money for the longer <laughs> one. <laughs> or like Robbie says, uh, some vet changed it around or something. Those things happened. Well, here we have a, uh, a police bayonet. Um, it looks like a rural one. The dark brown leather. Uh, it's in fairly nice condition, a little wear to the uh, to the pommel top, but um, let's see what the blade looks like. Yeah, it's a uh, Horster. Blade is nice and mint. And uh, we'll see what the other side looks like. There we go. And it's got the uh, uh, LD something which, uh, yep, that matches. So that's a nice matching uh, uh, rural police bayonet. <coughs> okay. Well, let's see what else is here. Oh, here we go. Looks like, uh, looks like another Another SA piece, guys. Let's see. I need a little cutter here to coach this along a little bit. There we are. Yeah, well, here we go. Another really choice grip. Look at that grip, huh? Man, that's beautiful. It's really neat and kind of thick. Cross guards. Good anodized scabbard. Really nice. And this one's got a... Uh, uh, looks like MI um, Grupa. But more, more nice. Uh, look how nice the fit is, too, on that... Uh, that uh, grip, beautiful. Ah, uh, full mint blade with a real black motto. Yes, sir, I like that. So, we show you who we made it of. Okay, ask your lip. No. Yeah. Oh, there we, we should have known that. A Gebruder Heller with the anchor. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, everybody likes them. Another mint blade and all. That's a nice, uh, a nice essay. The Gebruder Hellers are not the the rarest maker by any means, but uh, but every one of their daggers was always made very, very well. Always high quality stuff. Hmm. 
Ah, speaking of high quality, yeah. <laughs> what a joke that is. Well, looks like we're going to be essayed to death there, guys. Not a bad way to go, though. Yes, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow, this is nice. Oh, here's a um, here's a later a later piece. Um, not sure that this top guard is um, plated. It looks like a nickel one, but we'll have to check that out. Uh, but the scabbard fittings and so forth, the grip is beautiful with the aluminum eagle, and uh, really a great um, three-piece hanger in mint condition. And that three that three piecer there, that baby's got to be worth 250 bucks, something like that. Really, really nice. And it's uh, Asmin and DRGM marked on the back. Yeah, I don't know whether that's. Uh, I think that's a nickel uh, top cross guard. Let's see what the oh beautiful stoneman blade. Nice deep motto. Yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. And uh, it's marked uh, RZM M727. You know, it's possible too that um, uh, with some of these, um, did you get that, Ob? Yeah, I got it. All right. Moving too fast again? Yeah, you're moving too fast there, speed. It's, it's always possible with, um, with these RZM daggers too that there was some using up of old parts on them and that could account for a, sure. a nickel upper cross guard. Because it certainly seems to fit well. I mean, <laughs> the grip couldn't be nicer. Good click. Yeah, that's a that's a nice uh, nice RZM. And, uh, looks like we got, got another one here. Yeah. Now this is an early one. Yeah, another another pretty dagger here with a really um, really fine anodized scabbard with uh, all the most of the lacquer still on it. Uh, nice nice grip. A little uh, interesting grain in there. And uh, this one is um, SW marked. Um, it's not a not a bad dagger. Uh, let's see what who made this one. I, yeah, good blade on it. Not full mint, but um, but close. Very very nice. Nice grain on in the blade and all. And um, oh, it's an F dick. There we go, guys. They made good stuff too, F dick. Would you call me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ob. <laughs> okay, guys, we had to stop and uh, refill. You know how that is. Cheers to you. Mmm, that's a good batch. Well, we still got a couple more pieces to go in this collection. We're accumulating a lot of rubber bands. Look at that. Lots of free bubble wrap, so I can't complain. And some nice things too. I mean, these are these are what we would call uh, basic things in the hobby, but um, <coughs> uh, SA daggers have become uh, so popular that uh, I'm beginning to wonder whether they are basic anymore. But uh, we'll see, though. But. Well, there's nothing basic about that one, though. No, nah, you're right. Oh, looks like another another nice uh, later piece here. 
yeah, it's got uh, got pretty good um, uh, nickel plating. Shows a little bit of uh, wear there, but uh, not too bad. And the scabbard is certainly nice. Yeah, let's see who made this one. Oh, oh beautiful blade. Yeah, got all the grain in it and so forth. It's very, very nice. Uh, oh, there we go. That's one that you guys are like. A oh, yeah. double proof tiger. Yeah, those are <laughs> those are crowd pleasers. Look at that, huh guys? You like that one, Ob? Yeah. yeah. Anything with that tiger. Yeah. You don't see a double proof too often either. No. That's, a, that's a rare no. one. That's a great dagger. Yeah, that that's a great dagger. At, uh, that won't last long, I'm sure. No. Okay, we like that. Let's see. We're not done yet, guys, just about, but... I like the way the, uh, the consigner took the care to put these bubble wraps over all the hangers and, uh, you know, because the hangers can really scratch up the scabbard, sure. or if it gets hit, it puts a dent in it, and uh, so... Well, especially if it's an RLB, oh, no. Oh, yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of a good way to do things. And okay, it looks like we got another early example here with an early hanger. It's got a nice uh, nice cross guards and uh, beautiful grip, perfect condition. Fits like a glove. It's got one little one little ding here on the edge, but uh, that's on the edge. It's not that bad. And this one is a uh, N R. Group of mark. You get that off, and, and let's see what the blade looks like on this baby. What's NR? NR. Uh, um. <laughs> what remember offhand. I don't remember offhand. You don't sure? see it much. You sure it's NR? Yeah. Yeah, it's NR. Okay. It's, it's, yeah, what is NR? And you don't see north it too much. Something. Yeah, there. north. <laughs> Oh, it's got a good, uh, good blade on it. Nice grain and so forth. Good uh, motto. And uh, let's see who made this baby. Whoa, one of my favorites. Oh, I love these. Swilling work with the uh, with the circle with the arrows that go all the way around. It looks like a buzz saw. That's a neat maker mark. I like that one a lot. It's not too common either, but it really has a good look to it. You guys like that maker mark? Yeah, that's a nice dagger. Yeah. Good stuff. So this is a nice, uh, a nice piece. And it looks like we got one more. Hope you guys are still awake. We're doing our best. Let's see what we got here. One more. Like another SA dagger. Ah, this is a kind of a nice one. It's um, um, here we have another situation where the um, the top cross guard is plated and uh, the bottom one is nickel, uh, but you can see it's absolutely correct. The fit of it and so forth. Uh, uh, and it's one of these coppery eagles, which were um, kind of transitional. Uh, so I would say again, this is probably using up of um, of materials. Um, and then to go along with it, wow, it's got a beautiful black yeah. uh, SS hanger on it. How about that? Wow. Yeah, that's an SS hanger, isn't it? Yeah. Is it marked? No, but it's uh, yeah, yeah. it's a it's a beauty. That's, that's a, a bonus there. Yeah, that's a that's a two fifty three hundred dollar hanger there. Whew, man. Yeah, let's see what this. Uh, I like the grip too. The grip's kind of nice. It, uh, the shape of it and all. It's an interesting dagger. Let's see. Oh, tremendous blade. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that blade. It's really really nice. Uh. Oh, it's a 1940 vintage M781. Beautiful blade. Hmm. Yeah. 
that's a that's a nice uh, nice dagger. So so that's the end of uh, of that group, guys. Um, I think that was a pretty nice parcel of stuff, uh, especially for you guys that are uh, into SA daggers. Uh, so hopefully, if you look at them too, there's really no hits on the ball at all. No, uh, really on any no. of them. Really, man. Well, I knew this man. Um, uh, he's been going uh, oh, 10, 11, 12 years now, and um, uh, his son is um, selling off his uh, collection uh, little by little. And um, uh, he was a guy when he was at a show, he didn't buy anything unless it was really nice. And uh, it's obvious everything that he that he has is uh, his top drawer. Uh, so these are nice things. They've been stored away for a lot of years now. So it's uh, it's time for them to come out and make somebody else very happy, right, guys? I know that feeling. All right, collectors. Yeah, we're down to our uh, down to our last box here, and it's a big one. So I don't know what. Uh, what we're going to have here, but we'll we'll see here in a second. Hopefully, it won't be too hard to open up. The old Bob Burns cutter here is working like a gem. Thank you, Bob. In the last video, we showed you we Bob has his own box now for those special cutters, <laughs> cherished items, right, Bob? Thank you. Bob's my old schoolmate. You guys know that. I think I told you before. Well, this is not, not going to be as easy as I thought, apparently. Uh, it looks like it's going to have to be cut straight down the middle here. This will work. Uh oh. The dreaded popcorn, guys. <laughs> oh man! You almost made it. Almost made it through without any. Uh, let's see what happens here. Oof! Yeah, it's chock a block full of it too. See you guys. We're getting there. I just don't know how to approach this uh, popcorn though, Bob. Um, no, you just gotta do it. And clean it up you, later. You think there's any <laughs> chance it'll just slip out of here without any problem? Without losing one? No way. It never has, has it? <laughs> it's always a problem. Plus, they want to stick to everything. Oh, yeah. Just really There's actually worse ones than these, though. I know that. Well, yeah. we don't know yet. I didn't get the item out yet. Hey, we're doing pretty good here. Man, yeah, not bad. I think we're doing pretty good. They're we're professional. Here. You should write a book on that. <laughs> yeah, you're probably <laughs> How to get popcorn out of a box without getting it all over the floor. Well, apparently we did something right here. Well, whatever this is, it's a massive, heavy thing. Wow. The one up top. And on the other side, there's a piece there. Right. Anything else in there? No, that's it. This big heavy thing. Whatever it may be, guys. Take that baby shot before it blows out all over the place. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know where to put it to do that. Yeah, we should take that, that thing closed. Well, what could this be, guys? 
whatever it is, it sure looks looks important. Well, well, we shall see here. I don't know how the best way to open this up is, but we'll try the obvious here and see what happens. This thing is heavy. More bubble wrap for you. Wow. <laughs> Not as easy as it looks, Rob. Right? Oh my goodness. I'm starting to see something now. Holy moly. It looks like it's a, it's a blade without a scabbard. Here, watch your hold, <clears throat> hold that, see if I can just. Oh boy. Wow. Oh uh, yeah. Watch yourself there. This thing's probably yep. sharp. Yeah, sharp on both sides. Well, collectors, uh, uh, what this is, uh, the consigner did. Uh, did uh, tell me what it what it was, but um, uh, it's got a um, uh, a dedication on the blade, and it's dated um, 1756. Um, according to the consigner, uh, this is an executioner's sword. Um, unbelievably rare. Uh, the blade is like a razor on both sides, and you can see it has no point on the end. And the reason for that was there wasn't a point needed because uh, <coughs> these were uh, swords to, uh, to chop your head off. <coughs> um, I think there's probably an awful lot of um, history to this. Uh, there's... Um, uh, the same thing on both sides with the 1756. Uh, can you get any of that in there, Rob? Or maybe it's on. He got it backwards from here. Got it backwards, it. yeah. I'll try to turn it around, but don't get in the way of this thing because, as I say, it's like a race. And there's an etch on the tip. <coughs> and there's an etch on the tip? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you're right. We'll just lay it down and I'll get it. Yeah, there's a cross on the tip. Um, things like this are, uh, let me see that wire on that grip here, look at that yeah. pommel, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> well it was to be yeah. used with two hands. Okay, let me take a look at it. And the, um, uh, the consigner said that, um, Tilt it towards me here. What's that? Tilt it towards me. Yeah, perfect. The consigner says that, um, uh, it comes from Italy. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's it's from um, 1756, and uh, the consigner said that uh, this executioner's sword uh, would be hung in the town hall someplace on the wall uh, with a little sign next to it. Um, this is what happens to you <laughs> if you don't if you don't do things right. Um, uh, this is really a, um, a museum piece, uh, it was brought home by a veteran, so chances are he happened to uh, 
acquire it somewhere where maybe he shouldn't have, I don't know. Uh, but here it is. Um, something like this is very, very rarely offered uh, and um, uh, very, very valuable too. Can this I see the other side? The very, very valuable item. The brass grip, grip wire there? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a thing. Um, uh, I don't know how many victims it may have uh, uh, had the pleasure of doing away with, but uh, uh, it looks like the, uh, the residue has been cleaned off a long time ago, if that was the case. Uh, so, so what do you think that is, WKC? <laughs> <laughs> now I have no way of knowing, but um, uh, it's a, um, uh, quite a quite an incredible thing. Um, uh, there's an etching of a woman here uh, with a sword in her hand and it says uh, uh, Justitias, J-U-S-T-I-T-I-A-S, -T -T which may be an Italian word for justice. Um, so we'll have to look into this. Um, as I say, I, I believe it is a... Um, can you step uh, back and hold it up so we can see um, the whole piece? Oh, uh, I guess I could. Uh, there you go. Uh, it's a real <laughs> real museum piece here, guys. Got to get you one of those hoods and you look great. Yeah. Yeah, where's your mannequin on? Yeah, yeah, we'll see if it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. see if it works. It doesn't yeah. have a head. Yeah. Well, I have to say, collectors, um, that's the first time that... Uh, I've ever had an executioner's sword. Uh, I know it's kind of macabre and all, uh, but it is history, and uh, it's um, kind of macabre. We deal on third right. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I guess that's true. Yeah, what am I saying? Uh, oh, this is another delightful little yeah. item here. It's so cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, uh, we'll look into this and. Uh, uh, see if we can find some history on it, but uh, uh, it is something that is uh, uh, extremely rare and um, and very very valuable. Uh, so uh, with that, um, uh, that'll that'll finish up in style our uh, our unboxing. And uh, I guess some of you guys, if you didn't like the video, you'd like Robbie to use this on me. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I just want to mention a, a couple of things. We have the uh, the Allentown show coming up uh, uh, the 12th of May, and uh, I hope a lot of guys can uh, attend that. That's a great show, and uh, uh, there's a, a lot of Third Reich stuff there these days, uh, and it's a very friendly place to attend. A lot of good guys, uh, a lot of guns there too, but it's it's well worth the uh, the trip. Uh, and then uh, next month in June, uh, do you know the dates offhand, Ob? No, I'm sorry. Uh, but in, Six, in, I think, but you have to look at uh, it. I think it's early June, the, um, the Wilmington Show uh, in Ohio, better known as the Cornfield Show, sponsored by the uh, OVMS organization, is coming up. And, uh, and that's always a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful show, too. Uh, so, okay guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode, and uh, we'll see you again next time, and keep writing those comments in, and uh, um, keep sending me emails, I, I enjoy it a lot, and um, thanks for watching.